Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to today's matchup at the La Salette Fields. Today we are going to have the La Salette Division Two team play Chesterton Division Two team. I'm here with Malachi Martin on this very windy and cold day. Malachi, how are you today? Well, I'm doing pretty well, but like you said, it is a bit windy, 14 miles an hour northwest, and it's uh, a little bit frisky, a little bit cold. But other than that, it's a pretty, it's a pretty great game. There's not a cloud in the sky. It's sunny, and everybody's hyped up for this game. So I'd say it's pretty awesome, actually. Oh yeah. And today we're gonna have La Salette, who is ranked number one in their conference. Uh, Chesterton is also ranked. Is they're ranked right below La Salette, and they had a stunning victory a week ago or so against Fox Valley in their first game. They were losing by quite a bit in the first part, but towards the second half, like at the very end, they just turned on and destroyed Fox Valley, and that was Chesterton. So, Father Carlos said this will be a very good matchup. And we're going to see how this is going to play out today. Yeah, I think it'll be a little bit more interesting than last Saturday's game against West Suburban Bulls, in which they pretty much just got killed. In which La Salette killed the Bulls, but... Uh, Anyways, we start off with the possession. And immediately goes at the touch. Looks like Carlos Beck got pushed in the touch there. Touch judge on that side of the field, Jack Martin. Before that, there was a knock on. So there will be a scrum down to Chesterton right inside the 40. This is also the first Division II game season opener on these La Salette fields. It's donated to us by Tyke Nolman. Yeah, it's amazing to think that these awesome rugby fields used to just be like cornfields for miles and miles, you know. They used to be. Unless we got some rugby fields to break up the monotony. Quick tap. A deep kick. Looks like it stays inside. Knocked backwards. Daniel Sullivan catches up. Can't really get a hand up. That's Henry Dittman. Henry Dittman. And on the side, here's Marshall Schroeder looking for the pass. There's an offload. Thomas Mackin and Martin Schroeder bring him down. Close to the touchline, around four meters out. Some miscommunication there from Chesterton. And the ball just bouncing around. Then we knock on. Scrum to La Salette. Their turn to be inside the 40. Very close to the 22 meter line. Yep. I rather imagine that uh, Chesterton has heard about our win yesterday and they're rather anxious to not let it be a repeat today. So they're definitely trying to get the ball out a little bit faster than they usually do just from years past. So that might be the cause of that knock on right there. Also some miscommunication maybe to the ties. Some people are not ready. There's a bit of miscommunication and call and that could also cause mistakes. And those mistakes, every mistake matters. Oh, and a good pick off there by John Bronner. Break through the line, Thomas Mackin. Now Salo Cruz can't really get a hold of the ball. Get out to Andrew Sick. There's another knock on. So everyone's getting a bit grabsy with their hands at the very beginning of the game. Already having three or four knock ons. Kind of crazy in those first couple minutes. Yeah. And nobody likes scrumming. I mean, after we just get a uh, hang on, like, which way the wind's blowing and we can uh, compensate for how hard you're passing, I think the knock-ons will go down. Just even give us a couple minutes. It's a pretty solid scrum there, but uh, we can't steal it. They do keep possession. Now they're passing the it back out. out. And it's a very long pass out of bounds right around inside the 22 and around the 10 meter line. Very good position for La Salette. Quick throw. Salo Cruz gets it in and here's Patrick McDonald does in for the try. Patrick McDonald right on the outside. An amazing quick throw there from La Salette. Good communication to counter the Chesterton's bad communication. And it'll be a good try there from Patrick McDonald from Arcadia, California, giving Daniel Sullivan a pretty hard kick along the outside. 
Yeah, like any sports psychologist, mom watching at home or homebody that's just watching in their mom's basement will tell you, the first try is always the most important one. So this is definitely giving Lost Lot a psychological edge. Hopefully they can keep it up. And uh, but on the flip side, it does give Chesterton a reason to get maybe a little bit more fired up, maybe a little more, you know, fire in their veins to you know come back. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So Let's hope that the flip side doesn't actually happen. <laughs> that is, that's where the most fun games happen when we just kind of smash. Smash, smash, and crash. It's how Lost likes to roll. Daniel Sullivan's going to have a hard kick here from the sideline, and to add to that, a very strong win coming in directly on the left side of the ball. He's going to have to have some very good calculations. He's going to make this. We've seen him making kick, make kicks like this before. It's up. It is good. Now that was an amazing kick. Daniel Sullivan. That's like some pro kicking right there. And Salah Cruz in the middle of the field, tying his shoe. Gets ready to go. I think I love about Salah is how nonchalant he is. He doesn't, like, overdo anything. He's just there and he does his job. Sometimes he'll be a, bit, a little bit slow, but he's always on time for everything. Even if you feel like he's going to be late. He always just knows the perfect time to be out there, the perfect time to do things. Definitely true. Other people are showy, but him not so much. <laughs> John Bronner. Pass it back. And now also it's going to get their rucking going. See, yeah, that's, that's a strange thing that I've noticed about La Salette is they seem like they're running so stinking slow, and then the other team just, like, can't keep up with them. It's, it's just, like, you know, it's just, like, weird. Maybe it's a mental thing. Not sure what it is. Dana Sullivan. A good kick downfield and a nice tackle there coming up from Ball Marco Cruz. Oh, Kind of rookie, lost it, forming the line on defense. Had to get those tackles. Joseph Cadano gets that one. Now, Chester is just crashing with their forwards now. Lost those forwards, trying to back out with the defense. Now, defense is doing a pretty good job, not letting any holes, not letting anybody break through. Doing a pretty good job, staying as a just like a defensive flush. Yeah, it still looks like there's some forward stuff here after that me miss those miscommunications with the backs. A hard time. There's a decent run there from one of the backs. Drifting aside, Andrew Stake brings him down with one arm. It looks like the line on the left is a bit short. You can hear the fullback calling left. And a good chip kick from Chesterton. And down the field he goes. Daniel Sullivan catches in a good tackle. But he gets back up and down the field. Now that's kind of the kind of things that you want to have to stop. You can't just let people chip kick over you and catch it like that. That's a good counter ruck in there. Lost Alette forces him to get it out. Attack there, Carlos Speck. Right off the bat. Now the nine takes it himself. Carlos Speck gets another one right in a row. Chesterton now is rumbling. Lasso tried to steal a solid cruise almost got it there. Penalty awarded to La Salette. Looks like these lions want to do. Also, Dan Solvich probably a kick to touch. Nice deep kick. Dan Solvich is probably the best kicker that we have here at the school. And he's showing it. Yeah, that was definitely a powerful kick, especially with the wind against him. So that was quite impressive. We lost that line out. Down right around the 35, right in front of the 22. We haven't been doing so hot with our lineups lately, um, just with uh, the wind being a major factor. A lot of times it's not straight, not exactly our fault, but sometimes we will have it stolen from us or um, knock it on. So hopefully we can, oh, we just stole it actually, so we're definitely bringing it back up to par, even right as of right now. Now to ruck it over, quick ruck, quick, quick hitting. Now get down 
Fake pass out to John Prater. Here's Thomas Smack and breaks one tackle. Crashes right through. Not releasing the tackled player. And now Moose, also known as Seamus Hamlin. And the pass out to the backs. Martin Shorley breaks some ankles. Cuts inside. And gets the try. That little dive there got him that little extra edge and he placed it down right in front. And that was an exceptional play there for Martin Shobley. He waited for the ball to bounce perfectly and then it bounced right into his hand. The Chesapeake guy couldn't really get a hand on it. Wasn't expecting it. Yeah, for somebody whose nickname is Ugwe, a cartoon tortoise, you know, he can move pretty fast when he wants to. So. Right around the five meter line on the sideline, which is insanely good kick that he was able to hit. And here's Dave Sullivan again. Checking the calculations. And a bit too far. That's okay. Sometimes it's kind of hard to over, it's easy to over, over calculate things as we saw in the Lindenwood game with Sean Holman when he was kicking. He did make most of his kicks, but his first two that he missed, he over calculated. I think it was the wind. It was a very strong wind. He over calculated them a bit, but then once you start getting the hang of the, the wind speed, then things start going better for you. So hopefully Dan Sullivan will be getting that calculation snipes. Chesterton kicks it up, up about 15 meter kick. Received by Joseph Cadano, a good catch right around on his shoulder. Outflow to Carlos Shoes Speck. Now it is down, tackled. Another rumble, Solo Cruz. He saw something, a fancy offload there to Tony Carlisle, also known as Baby Rhino. Nice hard crash. Seamus Highland. Nice hard hit. Now they get that to the backs. Johnny Bronner. Big pass to Daniel. To Icarus. Received by number 14. Martin Shrubley. Trying to catch up there. John Bronner. Can't get the tackle. Shrubley's back on his case and throws him like a rag doll. He's drifting. Joseph Cadano got low. Got around the ankles. It's a good tackle there from Cadano. In from the side from La Salette. Penalty awarded to Chesterton. Sebastian Cook misses a tackle. McDonald misses a tackle. Finally, Daniel Sullivan is able to get low. Well, that La Salette's dangerous and close. And a nice active tackle there from Salo Cruz. Now, Thomas Mackin has his turn. Now they're getting ever closer. La Salette's place of goal line defense. Picked up. Tackle Andrew Sick from Bowling Green, Missouri. Now Los Lett's getting super low now. Thomas Mackin was on his knees, literally. And Chesterton gets a try. Yeah, we really can't let those uh, little little bit faster guys get through us. We can't we can't be missing our tackles like that, or they're gonna score every time. If they can break through once, they can break through again. So we're really going to have to do a better job with just getting low and staying, sticking to the basics of tackling. You know? can't just like try to one-hand it every time. Their school is a mix of traditional Catholics and no sort of Catholics. So some of these Catholics here are, who are playing are traditional and they always have a blast when they're playing against La Salette because it makes them feel more brotherly with the Latin Mass and all that. So it's good to have that here because La Salette is a traditional Catholic school as well. Now I don't know if this is the same kicker from last year on the D2 team. I remember last year during the semifinals, he made a very difficult kick literally 
basically on the sideline and the wind was against him and everything said no and when he made that kick it was in the hype was insane Chesterton still lost that game but they did put up a good fight that loss side brings it back up jogs it up Daniel Sullivan looking for the drop kick Ball's teammates line up behind him so that they can remain on sides. Here's the kick. Seat on the outside. And a nice tackle there from Jessica Dano. Nice and aggressive. No, that's Marco Cruz. My bad. Marco Cruz. Nice aggressive tackle. A Jessica Dano to the backs. Tackle Seamus Hanlon. Pulling him down. Uh, Fossilet keeps taking bumps up like this and they get out to the backs. And I don't know how it's going to end up for the winger who probably can catch our tackle him because Fossilet is kind of bunched up. And now a team tackle. Seamus Hanlon again with his fellow prop, Tony Carlisle. Carlos Beck. Another tackle. Yeah, Los Lett's defense might be a little bit bunched up on one side of the field, but they're reading the offense pretty well. You know, they're not really uh, utilizing their, their hands, their back line. I mean, if they did, they'd whip right past them, but as of right now, they're only using the forward crash. So, And we steal the ball. Back in, that's Andrew Sick. Andrew Sick breaks some ankles. Nobody's there to ruck over, but thankfully the ball was knocked on. Solid Cruz weaves in and weaves out. Lasso has advantage for the knock on. Quarterback head off there to the running back. Thomas Mackin takes a couple yards. I'm not exactly what uh, Chester was thinking there. This isn't basketball. There's no uh, jump ball if you just get your paws on it. So. Lasso quick record again. Seamus Hanlon wasn't really was expecting the ball, but thankfully his head's in the right spot. He was right there. And Lasso is right on their try, try, try line. Forwards rumbling it. Patrick McDonald takes it down right in front, and here is Sebastian Cook, also known as Scratch the Squirrel. Scores a try here for La Salette from Kalispell, Montana. We also have some guests here today from St. Louis. The Hanlins are here to watch their son play, Connor Hanlon on varsity, and also their son Seamus Hanlon right here in this D2 game. It's good to see the parents coming out and support their kids. It is a three hour drive, so it's kind of it's kind of close La Salette standards wise. It's not from California, which is a five hour flight, but it's good to see them come up. Daniel Sullivan again. Test the wind with some grass. See if you can make these calculations again. Knee high. Straight through the center. Bullseye. Boom shakalaka. That's a kick there. Daniel Sullivan. Daniel Sullivan, he's now two for three, sixty-six percent for those kicks, all from the same side. Which brings the score up to nineteen to seven. Thomas Stafke on the computer managing the scoreboard and the all the other stuff that is used with the computer that nobody else knows how to do. We also have Ian Fahey up top of the scaffolding with the camera recording this game. And of course I'm here with Malachi Martin. We also have John Reed taking some sideline film. Kickoff. And here's Thomas Mackin. Yeah, some pretty solid rucking for our side. They only sent one guy to try to counter ruck. Andrew Sick finds the hole, passes it out. Daniel Sullivan cuts inside. The middle of nowhere Missouri team. Daniel Sullivan puts a step farm. Offload. Sebastian Cook offload there to Henry Dittman. Horatio down the field. Another offload to Sebastian Cook. Now that's a good com communication there from La Salette. Only two phases, and they're already three-fourths of the way down the field right from their try line. There's Seamus Hadlin. 
Now here's Tony Carlisle, who's tackled down. Now back to the backs. John Pryor passes it to Thomas Mack, and he finds the hole. But someone gets their long, long arms there in front of him, and he'll get in front. Trying to get through. Andrew Sitt crashes. Gains some meters. Now they're right in front of the try line. Rumbles it in. Here's Patrick McDonald. Tackle down. Now it's close. Tony Carlisle. Hopping around. Breaks a couple tackles. Topples down like the London Tower. Tristan was a good counter-rookie. Or wait, back into the back. John Prater. Here's Thomas Mackin. Andrew Sick. Looking for eight. Hammers down a try. Andrew Six from Bowling Green, Missouri, a.k.a. the middle of nowhere. Puts... Or the middle uh, of the universe, depending on how you look at it. Or the middle of the universe as well. That is true. But it can't be the middle of the universe because, as everybody knows, I am the center of the universe. Thank you very much. Yes. But anyways, he did make a try, which was pretty awesome, right in the center of the uprights. So that should be a pretty decently easy kick for Sullivan. Right down the center. He can get this. He can get this. Stepping out, stepping back, passing it up. Nice little chip kick, nice and high. Dale Sullivan, three for four. 26 to seven here with about 10 minutes left in this first half. Chesterton is slowly making their way back out. Kicker picks up the ball. Also, you get all pumped up. We're on the roll now, especially with that run there with those offloads. Andrew Sick, when he offloaded that to Cook, then Cook ran. Oh, Daniel Sullivan. Daniel Sullivan had an amazing run. Offload to Cook. We got tackled. Cook to Dittman. Then Dittman back to Cook. And they get, made, it, made it at least 70, 70 meters total with that run. It was quite good. Daniel Sullivan kicks it right back. And it bounces. Lucky bounce, Seamus Hanlon, can't really pull him down. We have a good tackle, Cook. Now they kick it. Marco Cruz gets underneath it. From Leon, Mexico. Now it gets to Daniel Sullivan. And Daniel Sullivan's tackled into touch. Things like this happen. But there was a good run there, good idea. Yeah, definitely a good run, good kicking from both sides actually. Well, Chesterton line out. We'll see what the lineups look like. Hopefully they're better than yesterday when uh, the uh, Seaside team from Taft tried to do a two-man line out and there was no front lifter, so the poor jumper almost got shoved onto his face. That was rather hilarious to watch. So I, think, uh, I think that for D2 varsity, they might have figured out that you do, in fact, need three people. In fact, I think Chester Tid, they are kind of smart. I think they have some braids. So they will use them and have jumpers, lifters, two lifters. And they win their line out. Good tip back there for their jumper. Now he has an immediate tackle. Sebastian Cook tried to get out. Army crawls his way out of there. Now another break through the line. Daniel Sullivan. Here's Marco Cruz, who's a superior speed. Tackles him down. Now these holes in lossless defense are what's making it very hard for them to keep a straight line. <coughs> Again, another hole found. But thankfully, he was able to get a tackle. Nicholas Kellerman. Nick Kellerman again, smashed down, and stuck inside the ruck there. Hopefully this sir doesn't give him a penalty. <coughs> he doesn't. <coughs> yeah, they're not making much meters on the uh, on their passing, so that's definitely a good thing. While we're not getting too very active of tackles, they're not getting any farther than they already were. A lot of missed tackles though here in this phase. Lost light is a penalty, not releasing. Solid Cruz, quick tap. Carlos Speck. 
offload. And he goes down. Asakus gives a Nick Kellerman. A nice hard hit there from Nick. Also known as Frankenstein to some people. Thomas Mackin drops the ball. Knock on right around the 22 meter line. He's probably too concerned about dodging the person who's running out of the tackle as they catch the ball. They wait for the ball to get to your hands first and then make the move. Crouch five set. Nice strong scrum. They keep possession of it, however, and they get it out to their. And a okay. bunch of missed tackles. And an easy try there for Chesterton. A good run from their their player. Looks like they're 13, their outside center. But yeah, it looks like you figured out that if you just run straight and keep your momentum, then they, they really can't tackle you. So a lot of times they'll try to like, you know, kind of juke back and forth and take up a lot more side to side motion than they need to. And that gives Lost Let the opportunity to tackle him down. That's what happens a lot of times. But it looks like this time uh, we just couldn't quite get a grip on him. Couldn't quite get a grip, it seemed, because there was, he was running very hard and he was running low, which is kind of scary to tackle. Especially when when players run like that, it's kind of scary to tackle. But sometimes you gotta lay your lay your body on the line and take the hit for the team. But it seems like nobody was really able to do it to try to go for the side tackle on the side. But he just dodged it out. Just his kicker, another good kick. Doing a magnificent job today. By 6 14, lost it up by about two tries. Two tries and a kick. Gotta test out what they can do. It's now 46 degrees and sunny. Wind 11 miles per hour. Feels like 50 degrees though. And it's 37% humidity out here. So it's not really gonna get people sweating. But it's wet enough. Now, a deep kick here for La Salette. Gives a good position inside their own 22 as Chesterton tries to get out. And there's another kick. Chesterton has a pretty good kicker. Dale Sullivan wasn't really ready for it. But nicely, he got the hand. Gives a solid cruise. Cruise gets tackled, offload. But he wasn't able to get it. As it's in again. Pushing their way through here. Get to the forwards again for another crash. Seamus Hanlon. With a tackle. Helping out. Uh, Nick Kellerman and Solid Cruz. Yeah, they're not taking any chances with this rock. They got three people rocking over. Chesterton needs to keep possession of the ball if they want to get anything done. Now they get to the outside. Thomas Mack, who can't make the tackle. Nick Kellerman can't get him, but trips him up with his feet in a foot lock. Smart thinking there from Nick Kellerman. But Lost Lead is, their tackles right now are very atrocious. Yeah, they're, 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 they haven't uh, been making anything. Their form is quite bad. It's a lot of just like trying to grab onto anything that you can instead of just, you know, just gotta split their feet with your own and then cheek to cheek, as uh, Mr. Vitri says, just kinda get him right in the bread basket and shove him backwards. Now Lost will get a penalty, Seamus Hanlon. Breaks through the line. Luckily their tackles are just as bad as ours. An awful there, solo crew uh, to Patrick McDonald. Kind of scary. John Bronner does a kick. Bit too deep. Goes out in the back. And there will be a penalty offsides. Lasselette will get the penalty. Sir marks the spot. 
and then back out. Sheamus Hanlon cuts inside, cuts back inside, cuts out right right next to the try zone. Lost the forwards. Want to hammer it in? They have to run in low, or else the Chesterton players will steal the ball from them. Yeah, you also don't want to give them any opportunity to get a you know, like an arm or a chest under the ball and get a ball held up instead of a try. Very poor play there from Lasselet. Or never mind, it was a try. I thought the sir called a penalty for Chesterton, but apparently not. Lasselet will score a try. Because it looked like right there at the very end, they placed it down, but then it looked like someone was trying to ruck over. Uh, they weren't really sure if it was a try or not. And Chesterton kind of grabbed the ball, so they thought from up here that it was stolen, but apparently not. Lasselet will get the try. 31-14, Daniel Sullivan, if he makes this kick, 33-14. With five minutes or less left in this first half. You know, Sullivan's been getting a lot of kicks today from this side of the field. See that Los is in favor in the right side for the running with the backs. And so, Daniel Sullivan, another good kick. Chesterton runs back. And yeah, four for five, 80%. Pretty good. Malachi doing all these percentages in his brain because he's a genius. As he said earlier, the universe. He is the center of the universe. I'm glad at least one other person recognizes it. <laughs> Drop kick. A nice one against the win. Patrick McDonald breaks the round, looks to be off of Ben Blood. Lost Sacristan. Lost the sophomore Sacristan. And here is Nicholas Kellerman. Makes his way in there. Lasselet's rucking has been a lot slower than it usually is. But they're able to make do. Daniel Sullivan, a deep kick. Chase Marco Cruz. Ball goes in the touch right around the 35 meter line. Where you see a line out for Chesterton. Right now on the sideline, coaching for La Salette, we have Coach Lance here and Father Bevan. Coach this D2 team right now. And we stole the line out, just swatted it out of the air. Sebastian Cook running hard to the ball. Just tackled, but gains about five or six meters. Tony Carlisle with the fake John Broder, pass fake. Offload to Sal Salo Cruz. Down the sideline, down the middle. Refusing to go down, finally does. Also in good position. Rumble, Carlos Speck, Tony Carlisle, rock it over. <coughs> back into the backs, Thomas Smacken knocks the ball on yet again. Just to get the ball so they have advantage. Now yeah, there's some sloppier passes going on with Chesterton. And Los Angeles trying to clear some rocks out to the backs again. Another missed tackle. Now doing some more tackling though. I think it could be better this part. This last bit of the second half. First half. First half. We're being reminded by our elf on the field that we have to be more positive. So I will point out that our tackling has gotten a little bit better. While they're not active yet, they're still not letting anybody so far get through the line. He is now happy and satisfied. And now there's some um, more tackling going on here from La Salette. As we were seeing, it's not like the first first part of the first half. But now here's some quick running from Chesterton's player. He gets down, gets back up. And they force a turnover. Andrew Sink gets on the ball. 
but the sir calls it as a knock on on La Salette. Now, I wanted to agree with that call, but maybe he just didn't see what I saw, so. Definitely. Sometimes the ref sees things that we cannot see with our human eyes. The ref has supernatural vision, at least some refs do. Some refs are just atrocious. But this ref is particularly good most of the time. Now there's a lot of fumbling of the ball going on, and the sir will call another knock on for La Salette. Now we thought we wouldn't really be seeing much of this after that, those first couple of minutes of just knock on after knock on after knock on, but here we are, end of the first half, and we got some, well, knock ons and more scrums. I mean, one of the least favorite things by a forward is having to scrum, at least most forwards especially the locks who are in the very center and they're the ones who are pushing. The scrum rotates a little bit. Looks like there's a bit more pressure on this one than the other ones. But we keep possession of it. And getting real close now. 10 meters. Clearing closer to 5 meters on the left side of the field. Pushing deep hard, pushing deep hard. Very getting ever closer, but it's stolen by Chesterton. Can do a kick. Dale Sullivan, it's a bit too high. Picks it up. Goes back on the other side. Offload was not good. But Thomas Mackin falls on it. Offloads it to John Bronner, also known as Seaweed. Lost the Let's Rucking has not really been quick enough, but now the back seat. Solo Cruz finds a hole, exploits it. Smug, Thomas Mackin. I want to say that our rucking isn't fast enough because we have been getting there. They haven't really stolen any rucks. But I'd say that it's definitely not as fast as it usually, uh, usually is. is. Yeah. Here's Marco Cruz. Doing some dance move. Hostile pass out to Dittman. Daniel Sullivan. Comes back inside. That's a John Broder on the way. Gets the offload there. Henry Dittman. Horatio Hitman. Down to the middle, puts on a stiff arm, taunts him, and places the try. Oh. Henry gets one. Yes, another to sign off in his book of tries. Now, Henry is an absolute savage. He is amazing. He doesn't give a, a, as much credit to himself at all, but he is good. No, it seems like his favorite pastime is giving everybody else the glory that he so richly deserves. Indeed. I'm pretty sure that's a quote from somewhere, but I don't actually know what it is. <laughs> so I'll just pretend like I made it up. But for instance, there's this run that um, Henry had against... Oh man, what team was it? Oh, it's the Fishers. It's the Fishers. Henry had a nice run against the Fishers where he broke at least four or five tackles in a row, ran about 40 meters, and scored a try. And those were the tackles that they were, the guys were basically hanging on to him, and he just pushed them off and then kept running. Another guy would glatch on, push him off, keep running. Amazing running there, Henry yeah, Dittman. Definitely what we like to see in a game. But anyways, this is the end of the first half. So uh, we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. See you then.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half of this Chesterton versus La Salette D2 varsity game. I'm back with Malachi Martin on this very windy day. It's about 47 degrees, 37% humidity, which is perfect rugby weather. The wind is also about 11 miles per hour coming from the northwest. Yeah, it's definitely windy and it's definitely cold, but at least they get to run around and they're probably not feeling it too very much. Ben not. Also in philosophy, we have Mason Wilson subbing in. That's probably the only sub so far this half. Chesterton, we have quite a few new guys popping into the game. Score 42 to 14. And Tom Stafka has ditched the computer for now, so don't expect anything fancy to happen. Thomas Mackin warming up his leg for the kick. Santa Sullivan in the back. Now Las will be going against the wind, so these kicks are going to be a bit harder for Daniel himself when he has to kick a conversion. Sir talking to the captain of Chesterton. Some specifics of the game, most likely. Captains are ready. And here's a whistle from the second half. Ball has not made 100 meters. Sorry, 10 meters. So there could either be a re kick or there can be a scrum 50 and there will be a scrum here for Chesterton right off the bat as we can see the wind did affect Thomas Mackin's kick wasn't able to get it quite down Crouch, by and set. And back out, get to the backs here. Solid Cruz is a tackle. Now, Chester just tried to get into the forwards and crash that they've been doing. Because Los Angeles has been missing quite a few of their tackles. Daniel Sullivan can't hold on. Henry Dittman can't hold on either. Marco Cruz. Nope, none of them can hold on. And he, run it, and he runs it back down for a 55-yard try. Yeah, that was the same uh, 13 that made the try earlier in the game and didn't seem like anybody could tackle him. The same 13. And so far we already have only one tackle made in the second half. And there was at least 10 or 11 missed tackles in a row. And that's kind of hard. There, Lasla cannot have that going on if they want to keep in the game because this is how Chesterton beat Fox Valley because Chesterton was down by quite a bit at the end of the first half, but then they just cooked and in the second half pulled away and ended up destroying Fox Valley. So Lasla does have to be aware of that to can't underestimate this team and especially that one player. Kick right inside the bars. It's good. Now Los Angeles knows that they need to fix, and I bet they know perfectly well that they need to start making tackles. And they're making their way up the field, giving each other guidance. Tony Carlisle, a very confident stride. And Martin Schoberly looks like he's freezing cold and wants to be in bed. But he can get it. And underway, Daniel Sullivan this time taking the kick, which is a good decision there. And already we have a couple missed tackles, but there's one. One way, Sebastian Cook. Two tackles so far in the second half. Inside, breaking more tackles. Can't get a hold. Seamus Hanlon holds him down. 
Patrick McDonald. Now this is what we like to see when the first person who goes to the tackle and makes the tackle. We can't have one person miss and then two people later make a tackle. And now it has a hard time here. Looks like he lost us going for the ball, finally getting down. Right on the 50 meter line. Chesterton doesn't really know what to do here, but they figured it out. Smash and Cook helped out by Cadano. No gain in the yardage. And they pass it back out. Bent Blood helped out with Johnny Bronner. They get another tackle on the outside. Now they pass it out to the backs, kind of deep, kind of long, kind of dangerous for them. And Los Lettes pushing them back slowly. This is how you play offense while you're on defense. Los Lettes slowly gaining meters here because they keep pushing just to the back with a good tackling. So far they've gained around 12 meters already just from pushing back the tackles. And here they are again. That's about 14 meters now. Yeah, we're definitely doing a good job Good job with our defense now. We're definitely picking it up, not letting them get through so much. And we're getting a little, couple more um, active tackles. Of course, as soon as I say that, there's a kind of breakthrough, but then they do eventually stop them. As long as it's time, that's the whole thing. They have to be in position, but now Chesterton's right back where they started. They're getting part, some more missed tackles. They're good at finding the holes here. Mason Wilson, very aggressive with his tackles. Chesterton is awarded a penalty. Defense not releasing. Now Mason Wilson, you can always trust Mason Wilson to make a tackle. He is super short, which helps him get really low in the tackles. Gets really low and he can wrap very well. He's super aggressive. Always gets on, those, on the ball like that. Lost up trying to get in there. Looks like Shirley was trying to get a post there, but wasn't really able to. Sir told to get out. Seamus Hallett pokes the ball out. Uh, some more tackling. Just to try to do this thing. See, we Johnny pulls him down. Now there's more team tackles here from La Salette, which increases the chance of the tackle being made. Well, it's more likely that tackle will be made. It also takes more people out of the defensive line and gives it just a little bit more space for the uh, Chesterton boys to get through. So, uh, La Salette now steals the ball. Also trying to do some quick rocking. And we'll see what the sir calls. Calls time off. Time is on. Time is still off. Excuse me. Substitution. Getting ready to come back in. Justin Sumatra on the sideline. Ready to go. Kick the touch was unsuccessful. Lost let ruck it over. Push it hard. Thomas Daffke brings us nice, warm, comfy jackets for the next game because it's going to be freezing, at least from the angle that we're at. But Lost let gets the ball. Seaweed Johnny out. Long pass to Shoberly a bit in front. No, it looks like he just kind of popped it up with his toe. I don't think it was a knock on. Good play there from Shoberly. Now La Salette gets the rest of the ball. Seamus Hallett, crash. La Salette quick to support. John Bronner, pass that to Henry Dittman. Horatio. Kind of loses the ball there. Oh, hands off to Mason Wilson to John Bronner. Gets it to Andrew Sink. Andrew Sink one hands it. Guns inside. It looks like there was some chested guys in the way. The guy who tackled him, so it's kind of hard for La Salette to get, a, get it in the ruck. Well, they do. Smash the cook. Scratch. Chesterton gets the poach. Also was not quick enough to ruck over.
the support has to be right behind in order to be the correct. But here's a quick tap, Chesterton. And they immediately do a kick with the wind with him. Dana Soul, man, it's too long here. <coughs> so he decides to run. Take his juke move. He's taken down. Lost us back on offense. That is a good gain there. And the ball's in touch. And here we got Jack Martin. Marking the line and touch where there will be a line out for Chesterton. Let's see how many guys they want inside that line out. Also another St. Louis trailer that's here. The Lillis is as well. Are up here supporting the team. Some technical difficulties there, it looks like, inside the line out. Decide what to do, call the play. That was a bit too far, but oh, a nice tackle there from Patty McDonald. Got to get to the backs. Some more missed tackles. Lost up, trying to catch up there. And Salo Cruz. Finally catch up, gets the tackle, balls out. Salo Cruz looking to secure it. Penalty awarded to Chesterton. It's kind of not what you want to see here, right in front of the try line. Chesterton has already had a try this this second half. Lost has had none. Now they're crashing at their forwards. Aggressive defense here for Lasalette. Push to the back with their tackles. So far they have 22 tackles in the second half. Dale Sullivan hangs on. There's no monkeying around allowed anymore now that they're right around the try line. A drift. Looking for the hole, he finds it. And the ball is held up. Great defense for La Salette. In order to score a try, one must place the ball on the grass, physically touch the ball to the grass. But if the ball is on top of somebody's arm or leg or body or something, that's not considered a try. And that's what it was. Grubber kick off the goal line. Chesterton to take it in Sebastian Cook with a nice trip play. Advantage is given to Chesterton, however, because of a little bit of a uh, high tackle. Father Carlo brings the uh, ball back to the mark. So the it was knock on there. Back to the mark. We'll see if Chester did. They're going to try and run it in. Gets to the forward pod. Crash right in front of the try zone. Has to play some good defense here. The sir calls a penalty to Chesterton, right on the front. If I got, run it in. Right in front. So that's the 10 to the 15, 15 to 18. Held up again. Thomas back and running around outside. A nice kick where the defense wasn't, offense wasn't ready. Marco Cruz uh, can't get the tackle. But Mack is able to. Dangerously close to the try line yet again. We're trying to hold it up. That's the problem with the goal line drop when you're against the wind. And Chesterton will score yet another try. Two tries this second half. Four 
40 to 26. Chesterton slowly creeping away, catching up to La Salette. And we're going to have to go now to the A-side game. So we will see you at the A-side game. The rest of this JV game will be posted.